How about this spring weather? Feels pretty good at the ballpark tonight. Rockies and the Nets. First to four this weekend. There's your lineup. Read them on down. Wait till you see how excited Gio is. There he is, that he's batting eighth tonight. He cannot wait to get in there. And the Rockies can't wait to get to D.C. as a rule. They played very well here over the years. But Charlie Blackman's hurt. They still have a bunch of guys with great track records. And a former shortstop for us comes home to play one more time. Yeah, we didn't see Ian Desmond last year. He was injured. So first time we'll see Ian in a different uniform here at Nats Park tonight. The Rockies have struggled. They've lost two out of three and two out of three in their recent homestand. Nolan Arenado got in the brawl yesterday. You look at their record, three and a half games behind the Diamondbacks. They lead the National League in home runs with 17. So they got a big road trip. It'll be a fun weekend series. First time they've played four games here at Nats Park since 2013. And there's a guy we're talking about. Ian Desmond makes his return to Nats Park. Yeah, great numbers at Nationals Park. We'll give you his career Nationals numbers, the total of them during the evening tonight. And Gio gets the assignment. Look at him, 4 0 against the Rockies, and something about him against the West. Yeah, keeps the ball down in Colorado, keeps the ball down here. He's been working fast this year, but not as fast as Chad Bettis. He's one of the quickest workers in the big leagues, as everybody in the truck stands in applause. Looking good, Gio. Batting eighth and taking on the hard-hitting Rockies tonight. Two of the greatest third basemen in baseball. Nolan and Anthony, Arenado and Rendon. Take your pick. It's a hard one to figure out who's better from the two. Maybe Nolan more power. Maybe Rendon the better overall hitter. They can both pick it at third. What a third sack combination on display this weekend at Nats Park. column tonight first to four against the Rockies Nats are two and four at home and the weather here comes Gio by the way it's significant because when it's over 70 here the ballpark plays differently in terms of power than it does at other times this is really remarkable last season a point six nine difference in home runs at 70 degrees or more and since it opened in 08 a difference of about a half home run per game those are very very significant numbers especially with the Rockies here they've hit 17 home runs DJ LeMahieu a couple of years ago batting champion 373 career against the Nats with three homers 16 RBIs and he's two for four with a homer against Geo so they've got a hole in their lineup Charlie Blackman has had a back problem he's had a right quad problem but there's Zionetto off to a great start Arenado and Trevor Story and then Ian Desmond so Geo that 4 0 record against the Rockies five starts a three and a half ERA. Yeah, last start he had the no decision against the Mets on the seventh. 
Nats 3 to 2 loss, 5 and a third. Gave up just one run on six hits, struck out six Mets, walked three through 92 pitches. You see right handers hitting just 194 against Gio Gonzalez this season. Here's your Nats defense tonight on Military Appreciation Night here at the ballpark. Adams, Taylor Harper, the outfield, Turner Rendon left side, Kendrick Zimmerman right side, and Matt Wieters back in the saddle again. Good to see him back. Yeah, you uh, hit the ball like Matt did yesterday. They'll find a place for you to play. And Brian Goodwin a little shaken up after a dive he took after a ball in the outfield. So Matt will get a chance to get some A-Bs in this yard. Fifth year in the big leagues for Ben May, the home plate umpire. Ron Culpa, 21 years at first. Gabe Morales at second. And the crew chief is Jerry Meals, 27th year in the big leagues. He'll have the plate on Sunday. So the Rockies hitting only 232, 12th in the league, eighth in runs, first in homers, and DJ LeMahieu steps in. 706, first pitch on the edge. So far, so good. LeMahieu with an on base percentage of 390 in that leadoff spot. Rockies are six and seven, three and a half back of the Diamondbacks. On the road, though, they're four and three. And a ball hit high in the air to left. Matt Adams still going with it. Bullpen thinks it's gone, and the Rockies are on top. Yesterday, Tuesday, Monday, that's probably a fly ball that's caught in this ballpark. No, it is. I mean, you look at the flags are blowing straight down. The wind isn't coming down half street. It warmed up. We just showed you the graphic. We've talked about it at length, how Nats Park plays so small when it's warm and so big when it's cold. Well, here's an example. You see the lift in the swing, the Coors Field swing, if you will, the elevation and celebration for DJ LeMahieu. I thought that ball was going to be caught, and it was way out of here. There's Chris Iannetta. Curveball to him for a strike. That was LeMahieu's third of the year. 389, so it flew well over the wall where it's about 375. And another hook, 1 1. Chris Iannetta, 333 to start the season. Veteran guy who's been around for quite a while. With the Rockies for the first six years of his big league career. Stops in Anaheim, Seattle, and Phoenix since. Good change up for Gio. It's a big target back there, Matt Wieters. And the curveball, he's out ahead. That was Geo's first homer given up this year. Dangerous number three man Nolan Arenado is next. 3-2. Low. Let's go PNC inside the numbers. Check out the two third sackers for this series. Those were their seasons last year, both amazing years. Anthony has them in the on-base percentage. I think according to baseball reference 7.2 war for Arnado and a 6.0 war for Anthony oh. Rendon <laughs> very high for both both great players and I like what you said before the game you get in a debate about who's better who cares they're both great for their their teams and that's all that really matters and they're great for baseball. Yeah. 318. Six homers, 20 RBIs, career Arenado against Washington pitching.
And this one out to right center. It's going to be in the air for a while. Michael A. Taylor will get there. That's right in front of the 375 mark on the big scoreboard out there. A long out. The yeah, Rockies getting some balls in the air off Gio, which is usually hard to do with this two seam fastball when it's down. This had collision written all over it. And Bryce Harper did a nice job of peeling off here late. He's going hard for it. Michael A. Taylor's got the right away. Center fielder always does. And so quiet ballpark here tonight. I don't think communication was a problem, but that was a good job of Michael A. taking charge on a ball that had a chance to get weird there at the end. There's the third year man slugger Trevor Story who had 51 home runs his first two years in the big leagues and drove in a hundred and fifty four really burst on the scene early two years ago I think he hit what ten homers in April back in 16 ended up hitting 27 went on the DL early August with a thumb injury strikes out a lot. 191 last year the most in the National League. But when he connects man he does some damage and there's Ian Desmond on deck. Story just 25 years of age. Yeah, Gio's up with his heater right now it's the first time we've seen that this year. He'll adjust. Maybe a little strong. Eleven and a third inning so far. Coming into this one, eleven hits, only two earned runs. Story, small sample with a walk over two against our left-hander. Nats have turned ten double plays on the year. Fastball away. He wants that ground ball. Two seamer down is where he wants it. You see all these swings, and you see him through baseball, but even with the Rockies, you see it more. Everybody lifting. Trying to get that ball in the air. 25th anniversary for the Rockies this year. How about that? Mm. You want to hear the stat of the day? There's 793 and 1209 all time on the road. 416 games below 500. That's unbelievable. Why are they 27 and 16 here. Swing and a miss as Geo runs the fastball up and away for the second out. Very classy Nets fans. Well done. That was cool. It started to gain momentum like oh yeah I remember this guy. <laughs> Probably been a little bigger if he had played last year. 110 homers as a net. 432 runs batted in. Weeders keeps it close. But that gets away and Ionetta is down to second base. A great change up in the dirt. Weeders does a nice job of blocking it, keeping it in front. But a good read by Ionetta to get into scoring position. And as you all know, this is a tough guy to pitch around. He's swinging. <laughs> you know he wants something here. Waited a couple of years to play here after going to Texas, then Colorado, and being hurt last season. But you got cargo on deck. And he had 206 against lefties last year, which is two home runs. So. I know it's early. I know you got a long time and in nine innings to hit. Start throw that out there. Talk amongst yourselves. He pops it up. Short right. Kendrick out. Harper in. Howie can't get it. Ball kept going on him. And safe at second, the Rockies get another run.
Well, it was breezy earlier in the day when you got to the ballpark. The flags aren't moving in the park, but if you look at the ones up on the crane past left field, the wind's still howling. So I don't know if that had something to do with this, but how he did the pop-up dance here at the end. You see him kind of moving late. So you're thinking he's got to make that play, but if we get a shot of the cranes in left center field way beyond the outfield, when the ball gets up and out of the stadium high like that, that's when the wind will play with it, and that's what happened. You know, maybe Bryce could have helped him out a little bit there, but if you look at the cranes, the, the real high up flags, kind of to the right, that's where you get the idea. See, it's still howling. Two nothing Colorado. Carlos Gonzalez the hitter. Ten homers 31 RBI's career against Washington. Geo's retired him nine out of 11 times. They've given Ian Desmond a double on that. And an RBI. Now this one was up there a long time and usually the outfielder has a better chance at it. But in, in everyone's defense, the wind is non-existent down on the field because it's sunken. But that ball was being played with up high. I, I, I'm, I'm looking at stiff flags now outside the ballpark. It's blowing pretty hard. 2-0. Oh. Carlos Gonzalez, 11th year in the big league, still only 32. So he was swinging on 3 and 0 and pops it up. Trey Turner has it, and the Rockies get a couple to start the series. Homer walk, windblown double, and the Nats bats will need to get busy against Chad Bettis. Tonight, Nats are hitting 240, fourth in the league, seventh in runs, second in home runs. Trey Turner has never gone hitless against Colorado, had a cycle out there. 420, 3 and 13, the power numbers. Trey also 3 for 5 career against Chad Bettis, who starts against the Nats for the third time. There's the arsenal for Chad Bettis. He works quick like we told you in the open. Last start no decision on the seventh against Atlanta. Three to two Rockies win. Went five and two thirds gave up a run on four hits got a pretty good change up. 
Averages 86 miles an hour. Fastball will cut a little bit at 91. See the cut right there. Yeah, so Trey's only hitting 217, but if you go over to the right, the on base percentage at 345. He has walked nine times. One of his hits against Bettis, a home run. Foul tip into the catcher's mitt for the first out. The Rockies defense behind Chad Bettis tonight. Par Desmond Gonzalez, the outfield story. Arenado left side, LeMahieu Valaika right side, and Ionetta doing the catching. Rockies uh, right now with Arizona, the best, tightest defense in the league. They've only made three errors so far. Buddy Black. Outstanding pitcher with the Royals in his big league career, longtime coach with Mike Sosha in Anaheim. And Rockies went 87 and 75, finished third, 17 games behind the Dodgers in his initial season last year. I played in the wild card game, first winning season since 2010 in Colorado. Mm. In there to Anthony Rendon. Nationals hits leader with 15. Howie Kendrick has 14. Bryce with 12. And those quick hands and a foul ball straight back, one and two. Yeah, Bettis returned to the Rockies rotation in 2017 after recovery from testicular cancer. He was diagnosed in 2016. Got a biopsy in March of 2017. It showed that the cancer had spread, so he had to go undergo chemotherapy. Great story his return last year for the Rockies. Yeah, he told his teammates, I'll see you later this summer. Yeah. Back he came, he made nine starts. Twenty eight years of age a Lubbock Texas native originally drafted by the Astros. And a 2 2 coming to Anthony Rendon. That ball out to left center he didn't get all of it. Gerardo Parra for the second out. So it's Bettis and Bryce. Harper 319 career against Colorado two for six against Chad Bettis. It's always interesting to see how different teams approach Bryce Harper. We'll get our first look here. Who was sitting in the stands and where were they sitting in the stands. Was it Cincinnati. Was it Atlanta. Were they here for the first part of this homestand. What's the Rockies approach to Bryce Harper. Are they going to avoid him. Are they going to pound him in. Throw soft stuff away. So here we go. The Rockies will show us right now. Yeah, I think they should challenge him. They have a lead. Just throw it right down the middle. He can't hurt you. <laughs> Maybe a BP sort of fastball. High 80s missing away. So Bryce 12 for 38 to start the season. On base percentage 500. And when I say who was sitting in the stands, talking about scouts, bearing down on Bryce every at bat. Everyone has their ideas about how you you get them out. There's a defense. So a 2 0 changeup. Yeah, pulls the string here on the changeup. You see how he just kind of. Barely holding that thing and creating a lot of arm speed. That was a 1 1 pitch, sorry. And it's 1 and 2 now. And more hits up the middle than pulled or the other way so far. Well, he's trying to stay in the center of the field. That keeps him through the baseball and. So he doesn't pull off. And a good eye goes 
three two now Bryce has walked 16 times tied with Freddie Freeman most in the league. So Ryan Zimmerman awaits. Away and down said Captain Obvious. Better get it there. Price hits it pretty well to left. It moves Para near the track and yeah it is carrying so far at Nationals Park tonight. After one Rockies have a couple in the first of four that will take us through Sunday against Colorado. on a Thursday evening in Nationals Park we go top second Pat Valeka Gerardo Parra and Chad Bettis top two. Twenty five year old infielder. Out of UCLA. Hit two fifty eight for the Rockies in one hundred and ten games last year. And the curveball just stays away. Two for three against Geo. Great arm speed and then the changeup. Yeah, everything away. And this one down. And he paints inside edge elevated a bit. Geo second strikeout. Well, a nice sequence right there all the way around. Everything we showed you early. Look at pitch cast away, and then it'll speed you up in with the fastball at 90. Probably looked like it was a lot more firm than that. Hard to pull the trigger when the rest of the sequence was down and away. Nicely set up. Here's Gerardo Parra. To the left side and Turner's going to have to be really quick. Played it pretty well. Zimmerman elevates to keep the runner at first. Yeah perfectly placed. Trey Turner played this as well as you can. Ryan with some serious hops to keep her out of at first base. It's one of the best rebounds by a Cavalier this year. Too soon, Carp. Way too soon to be talking about Cavaliers. When you, since when are you Mr. UVA? Well, I'm just saying there's a lot of people that watch it <laughs> that are. <laughs> it's like the biggest upset in the history of the world. Chad Bettis, one for four this year. 
And by the way in the first inning the scoring has been changed on the Ian Desmond fly ball. It's been ruled an error on Howie Kendrick now making the second run unearned. Hey stay with the Nats it's a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry the home count discount does not exist. That was not too soon but that was pretty uh, pretty effective. The home scoring you're a Rocky now. Sorry. Yeah. That's an area and yeah. it would have been a hit if you were in the Get other an RBI side. next yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> he was a great Nat we miss him. One of the best leaders we've ever had in this clubhouse. Did he stab at it? He did. Did not pull the bat back. One ball, two strikes. Still trying to lay one down. That's a hard pitch, that curveball. So he bunts into Geo's third strikeout, two down. All right, Washington area Toyota dealers help children and their families by making a $44 donation to the Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout by an Nats pitcher this season. Top of the order, DJ LeMahieu. Got one up in the breeze first time and hit it over 380 to the visiting bullpen in left field. It was a fastball. And get this a year ago the Rockies saw more fastballs than any team in baseball. Interesting you would think teams would junk it up against him wouldn't you. Well it doesn't break at Coors Field so that makes perfect sense. Yeah. They faced 58.4 percent fastballs last year. The highest in baseball. Yeah there were. Uh Good breaking ball and change up pitchers who've gone up there and struggled. Daryl Kyle comes to mind with his big curveball. Lefty, Mike Hampton, Denny Nagel. Really good elsewhere, but not at Coors Field. Two and one. Mayhew hit 310 last year, 38 points lower than when he won the batting championship in 16. This guy's had a lot of hits. 192 the year he won the title, 189 last year. Set out the last two months of the season that year when he won the title. Seemed like it, didn't it, with Murph <laughs> chasing him? Yeah, we weren't excited about that. We were not pleased, no. Walt Weiss was his skipper, and I think he was the mastermind behind it. Now the bench coach in Atlanta. 2 2 pitch. Ball driven to right slicing. But fair. And Bryce bobbles and with that Stu Cole sends the runner. So the Rockies lead three nothing. And we'll see how they scored with the runner coming from third to home. I mean you can't assume. Everything's going to go smoothly in the corner, but there was a bobble on the play. I'll tell you what, it seems like DJ LeMay who gets four hits against the Nats every time he faces him. He's been one of the toughest outs they've faced over the last two or three years. And it looked like Bryce played this perfectly, and then the ball hits the ground. Stu Cole had the stop sign up initially, I thought, and then right there waves him once the ball hit the ground. So, sort of a sloppy start defensively for this one for the Nats. Here's Chris Iannetta who walked first time. And LeMahieu has a homer and a double already. And Gio's most effective pitch so far that change up to the right handers.
That's a good hook. Two and two. So Geo first inning 26 pitches 20 more here in the second. Challenge fastball hit hard to center Michael A. Taylor picks it right off the turf. He's made some outstanding plays this week. It's coming. you by PNC Bank. There's no better time to act than today. PNC make today the day. And by Ocean City, Maryland. There's no end to the fun you'll have in Ocean City. Plan your trip today. Yeah, it's warmer. OCOcean.com. Go for a run on the mall. That's my favorite place to run. Three to nothing, bottom of the second. After you run, crush some pizza. Nationals fans, the Nets win and score seven runs or more. Best segue ever. Get 50% off regular menu price online orders at papajohns.com with promo code NATS50. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Then go for another run. Ryan Zimmerman had a day off yesterday. That ball carrying into the corner. Carlos Gonzalez. Just under 330 feet away, and that's four straight for Bettis. Matt thrilled everybody with the oppo tater yesterday. One one. 0 for 2 with a walk against Chad Betta's career. Matt Adams has hit Colorado pitching to the tune of 370. Strike two. So he tried the top of the strike zone.
Target away. Takes it that way for a base hit. Beating the shift on a 2 2 pitch. Great job by Matt of taking what the pitcher gave him. Nice joke right there. The stand on looks like a backdoor, maybe cutter. Let it get deep, hit it the other way. 102 miles an hour. That didn't look like 102. Yeah. But he'll take it, and there goes the no hitter. Next up is Howie Kendrick. Three hits against Betta's career. It's one one. There were some groans downstairs on that one. Mercedes Benz will cast it. Top of the zone. No matter for Howie Kendrick, it's just strike one. He can hit. Boy, I mean, do you see what Chris Iannetta's doing? It, I mean, he's catching that like it's a knuckleball pitcher. That was weird. There. The, it, there's been two or three tonight that he's just stabbed at. I don't know if he's not seeing it. The ball's moving that much, or Chad Bettis has a knuckleball that I don't know about. Now you're right about that last grab. He's done it like I'm going to say three times tonight already. That ball scorch, but it's right at Trevor's story. LeMahieu will turn the 6 4 3. So the Nats down by three early against the Rockies. A little interesting, I think, to say the least. This went from the last series where guys were getting hit, and then all of a sudden the Padres threw at the big guy. And Perdomo goes straight glove towards Arenado. That was weak, on, in my opinion. Not a good look for a pitcher to throw his glove. And then it kept going. J.J. Ellis over there. It's Mark McGuire going nose to nose with Nolan Arenado, saying, you hit three of us. It was our time to retaliate. And all this nonsense needs to stop. Five players ejected. Uh, nothing handed down by baseball on this one yet. They did address the Yankees Red Sox today. I love that Nolan went. You got to protect yourself. Yeah. I, you, know, you, you don't condone violence but hey th there comes a time when as a man they keep hitting you and they're hitting. You know I love that Bryce went last year. I don't, I don't think he's got drilled on purpose since. And that's the last guy you'd want to hit too, Nolan Arenado. Yeah. And we are visiting San Francisco on the next road trip. Let's hope that's all past history, but who knows? I mean, 
the way you send the message is, you know, if our guys are getting hit, you go after the big guy. It's the way it's been forever. 1-1, one, one, target in. And I think if you really want to send the message, it's when there's the most at stake. That's when you send the biggest message. Like, I'll lose this battle to win the war in the clubhouse with my teammates to have your back. Two balls, one strike. Well, you were talking about the day as we watched the video, a Yankees rookie did that very thing. Yeah, but in my mind, I played a lot of second base. If Brock Holt's got a problem with that, he's got to handle it at second, right then and there. Handle your business right there. I don't need anybody to hit anybody to protect me at second base. If you come in and I disagree with your slide, whatever it is, you know, even if it is a plastic cleat nicking your calf, which that's a whole other story about how the game's gotten soft. Take care of your business right at second base. And if you don't take care of it there and it's still bugging you after the game, go knock on the clubhouse door and take care of it man to man. 2-2. Two, two. Done both. Speaking from experience. I mean, we saw that we saw the knockout slides they used to do. Oh my he gosh! He nicked his calf with a plastic cleat, and the whole world ended. And they showed we're Helmut Kirk guys knocking now. Willie Randolph into left field. With after 99, that. we're drilling guys because you nicked his calf. Don't get me going. I, I, that's enough. That's a tough play for any ball person. Arenado hooking a foul ball down there. I know Dustin Pedroia in Baltimore and that whole thing last year, so there was probably some guys in the bullpen talking about, hey, we can't lose another guy like we lost Petey. I understand, but come on. Two two. <laughs> and a lot of those things, probably most of them happen within the division. I apologize to everybody. That was therapeutic for me. That was all selfish for me only to get that out. You know, we can, we can hang a punching bag in this booth. It's no, pretty big. We need a couch. Just go back there and land a few blows next time. I need a couch and a therapist, but I feel a lot better. That's Geo's second walk tonight. All right. Sean Doolittle bobblehead. Friday the 13th. That's tomorrow. Be one of the first 25,000 fans for the Nats Rockies game to collect the first of five bobbleheads for tickets visit nationals.com we got ours right here trust me folks this one's cool and I'm not just saying that because I have to I just want to tell you based on past experience leave it in the box tonight I always break. you have a way of taking them out and then break the them. poor guy's broken in half before the fans even get it you know just just for your own gift giving purpose so I'm giving this to a friend she already knows it's coming Trevor's story. Strikeout swinging first time. Rockies have their leadoff man either aboard or circling the bases for the second time in three innings. So Gio's been off the stretch a lot in this one. 47 pitches first two innings. Ground ball outs, Carp, and I'm not seeing any yet. You got any? Nope. Take one right here. Take two. Elevated, 2 2. Nats had to use seven pitchers yesterday in the 12 inning game. Davey would like Gio to get deep into this one. And the curveball had Story way ahead. I thought Dan asked him a great question during the presser today about trying to win games as many as you can at this stage of the season, but at the same time, not wearing out your bullpen. It's a challenging thing for a manager to do. Two two with nobody out. And a foul. 
So Dan I thought that was an interesting exchange between you and the skipper. Oh Bob thank you and Davey's response I think was interesting he said you need to have confidence in all the guys in your bullpen not just your a bullpen the back end guys who you'll roll out in high leverage spots. He said nights like Max Scherzer a couple nights ago help and blowouts help too. You want to rest guys as well so he said it's kind of a delicate balance you want to win games but you do need to have the big picture in mind as well. Maybe the biggest challenge any manager faces. Swing and a miss on a great changeup. Geo strikeout number four, and he rings up Story for the second time. Check out the pitch again, either below the zone or above the zone, changing the eye levels right there. Nicely done. You see the changeup down the zone, got a good feel for it. So here's Ian Desmond who popped that ball in the short right first time originally ruled an RBI double changed to an error and Geo is going to deflect that one into a base hit. Ian Desmond's living a charmed life in his return to Nationals Park. Well they changed that one to an error so not that charmed and that might have been a Taylor made double play but Geo doesn't know where Trey is behind him that's just instinct and reflexes. Well I'd say it's charmed when you hit a pop fly and you get a run out of it. So it's two on one out. Carlos Gonzalez lefty lefty matchup. Cargo popped up to Turner first time. Yeah that conversation with Ryan at first might have gone something like. How they score that hit for now it is. <laughs> Ryan Zimmerman would be an outstanding official score. I should add. See when the first baseman's playing behind you and the scoreboard's right behind the first baseman you can act like you're talking to him but meanwhile you're checking right now to see if it's an hit or an error if he's not behind you. It's kind of frowned upon by your teammates if you start rubbernecking the scoreboard to see if they scored it a hit or not. At least it used to be. I don't know if it's that way anymore. You have to do it very slyly so it doesn't look selfish. Because if you stand up first and yeah. you just turn it around looking at the scoreboard, now it's about me. Is it a hit? Is it an error? So there's ways to do it where you kind of check it out. Look at it. He's still looking. See, look. Corner of your eye, or just talk to Ryan and look up a little bit. You'll see it's a hit. And Zim would say, I know what you're looking at. One two pitch. And a swing and a miss on 90 upstairs. So Gio racking up the strikeouts. Five of the eight men he's retired. By design, nicely done. Next up is Pat Valeka, who was called out on a pitch up and in first time. Great article by Ken Rosenthal on the Valaika family. If you get a chance to read it, it's an amazing piece. One of the best pieces I've ever read. So Google the guy in the batter's box and Ken Rosenthal, and you know what I'm talking about. Curve ball in there. Quite a battle for Geo tonight.
Yeah, throwing a lot of pitches and some weird plays behind him. He contributed to one and 72 pitches already is just crazy after two and two thirds. Geo's faced only five batters tonight off the full windup. A ground ball out. Take a long throw by Rendon. He gets it done. So the Rockies leave a couple in the third. Weeders, Geo, and Michael A. Straight ahead. In 2016, Ian Desmond's final year with the team before hitting free agency, he took one final walk through the ballpark, the ballpark that he came up through the major leagues in, and walked out the center field route by the 402 mark, an open gate out there in center field. Said he looked around, kind of took it all in one last time. And now here he is back in a game here at Nationals Park for the first time, and he's playing center field. He said he felt it was fitting in a way. He's stepping back on that same spot that he left Nationals Park in, wasn't able to play last year when the Rockies returned because he was hurt. Now he's back out there in center field, a spot he didn't play as a national, but he walked out his Nationals tenure through that gate. All right, Dan, thanks. Ian Desmond played a lot of center field with the Rangers before becoming a Rocky. Matt Wieters, look at the carry on this ball to the track. Just a footnote on Desmond. When he came to the big leagues, September 8th of 09, he wore number six. He later switched to number 20 in tribute to his original big league skipper, Frank Robinson, and the respect Ian had for what Frank accomplished in this game. He was the last, the last link to Montreal as far as players. His wife Chelsea still made the best play at shortstop in Nats Park history. I don't care Wounded it. Warriors games, diving deep in the hole. It doesn't matter. We, I mean, we could talk about Ian all we want tonight. <laughs> he was a great nap, but his wife made the best play I've ever seen at short. So it was great. <laughs> well, Ian has told people he was not only in love, but he married Chelsea so his kids would have her great genes for athletics because she's outstanding too. One of the great baseball couples we've ever known. Grayson Cruz and Ashton the boys. Now we're glad he's alive and well with the Rockies. Geo 0 for 5 this year. It's a good hack. Something about his swing right there.
and on the ball away can't reach it. Second strikeout by Chad Bettis. Saturday Nets take on the Rockies it's Dream Foundation Day support the Nationals Dream Foundation purchase a mystery grab bag inside an autographed baseball by a Nats player or Davey Martinez sales begin at 11 a.m. in the Centerfield Plaza. Check it out at nationals.com. Hey why not you get an autograph ball and max pitches against John Gray on Saturday. Tanner Roark and lefty Kyle Friedland tomorrow night. And then Sunday Steven Strasburg follows Max against the lefty Tyler Anderson. This one's going to be close. It's twisting back, but beyond the reach of Pat Vileka. Into the 8 o'clock hour we go. First pitch was at 7.06 tonight. Rockies on the board immediately on a DJ LeMayhew homer. Got an unearned run later in the inning after a walk and a bloop. And a double by LeMayhew drove in another run in the second. Michael A. Taylor reaches out, hits it pretty far out to left center, but Ian Desmond is there. So Bettis faces nine nets. Adams the only hit. Double play took care of that last inning. By the all wheel drive Rev 4 Toyota. What drives you? Visit buyatoyota.com for great deals. Need some action here at the home of the Nats. Top of the fourth, Para, Bettis, LeMayhew. It's all rocky so far, 3 0. And against two guys at the bottom of the order, Geo could really use a quick fourth inning. 73 pitches, 46 strikes. Par a base hit to deep short first time. That was with one out in the second after a failed bunt attempt by Bettis. DJ LeMay, who drove him in with that drive into the right field corner. Looking to drive it the other way again. Breaking ball had him well out ahead. Para, ninth year in the big leagues. First six with Arizona. Stops in Milwaukee, Baltimore. That was for 55 games at the end of 15. 
And that was third year with Colorado. Geo had him offering at the curve. 2 2. Geo would love a 1 2 3, a quick 1 2 3. Get back in the dugout and see if they've made some adjustments to Chad Bett a second time around. Pretty good jamage. Zimmerman has to back up. Geo just a tad late getting over, but in time to get par. Nicely played. Gio's talking to everybody, isn't he? He just talked to the first base up by Ron Culpa, then the first base coach, then Zim. Now he's got the ball. I love it. He's into it. It's good stuff. And Para hustling, too. He saw a chance to beat the pitcher to the bag. Ryan had to play that the way he did to get the big hop, and Gio hustling, Para hustling. There's Bettis. Tried to move a runner with a bunt first time. Couldn't do it. Rocky scored anyway. And the curveball. Roundhouse variety gets the outside edge. Ball was tipped and then gloved cleanly by Matt Wieters. Two outs. Let's see if Gio can close things out. Nice curveball. You see the break right there from behind home plate. So my second stat of the day for you, the Rockies are five and one when they out hit their opponents, one and six when they're out hit by their opponents. No contest so far. Small sample size, but when it's five and one and one and six, might be something to it. All right, time to stop DJ LeMahieu. Six total bases already. First inning homer to left. Second inning RBI double to the right field corner. Out to short Trey Turner behind it. That's the quick inning Geo needed. Maybe some momentum carries over. Turner and the boys back into the dugout. percent or more on car insurance visit Geico.com see how much you could save oh. anybody gonna catch number one wow what happened to Tom military appreciation night oh look at this I like it George wins his second Tom has three eight nothing Teddy has a couple 
and experience the power and toughness of Ram at your local dealer or log on to RamTrucks.com to get to work. Guts glory, Ram. What they've done against the Rockies, Turner, Rendon, Harper. Time for some knocks. Time to get excited about something right here, right now. Second time around, here we go. Out to center. Easy for Desmond. Minimum 10 batters facing Betta so far, thanks to the second inning double play ball. Rendon fly ball to left first time up. And on the target away the foul ball goes that way and it's playable for Pat Valeka. So let's go back to Bryce's first AP against Chad Bettis. A lot of change ups in the sequence down and away and then the six pitch he softly lines well softly swings and hardly lines out to deep left field. And he says they were all in the dirt here. The Tim Bogart at first base he finally got one pitch up and he, and he drilled it. Yeah. I said that. And FP we all know this it's up to other guys in the lineup. To determine how they'll end up pitching to Bryce Harper. Because right now they can pitch around him if they choose. Yeah, I mean, as soon as Zim gets going and Murph comes back, it might be a different story, but they can pitch carefully. 3 0 lead, though. You could take a bite out of that in a hurry. 1 1. You pitch around Bryce here and Zim hits one out, it's 3 2, and you got instant ball game. So I. I would go after Bryce if I was Chad Bettis here. Look quicker than 91, and it's 1 2 the count. And there's a lot of things that go into it, Carp. Time of game, score of game. And what you said, who's hitting behind them and in front of them if they get on too. You got first and second, nobody out right now. You're not walking Bryce Harper. Right. You got runner on first, one out right now. You're not walking Bryce Harper. So a lot of things that go into it. The pitcher, how he's feeling about himself. Two two pitch. Another long count to Harper. That was a great take. I thought that was a strike all the way until the last second. Bryce picked up the rotation early. Yeah, he has picked up that aggressive, but so smart in the box as his career wears on in terms of the pitches he won't swing at. 87 on the off speed got him. Three K's for Bettis to the fifth we go.
National providing innovative high-value dental and vision benefits to area employers and individuals. That's Lieutenant General Andre throwing out the first pitch. He threw a strike. Nicely done, sir. Thank you for your service. And thank you for your selfie. We all appreciate it. Dominion National, it's almost Friday. Top of the fifth. Could that be a rally selfie? Maybe. Backwards cap, even though it was the Chicago White Sox. Ball cap. Chris Sionetta has walked and lined out hard to Michael A. Taylor. So Gio got through that fourth inning on 11 pitches. Three and oh. It's being reported on Twitter. John Heyman had it first on Twitter. That the Nats have signed Mark Reynolds. Wow. To a minor league deal. He's hit everywhere he's been. Pending physical. And all the Nats beat writers are reporting it now on Twitter, but they're saying John Heyman had it first. Leadoff walk, Ionetta, fifth inning. That's the third issued by Gio. Mark Reynolds with the Rockies a couple of years ago, hit 282, 14 and 53 in 118 ball games. And of course, one of those Virginia Beach area guys. Some right handed pop off the bench. Kind of compliment Matt Adams a little bit from the other side. Ryan Zimmerman's buddy. Yeah, Mark Reynolds. First base for the Rockies last year, hit 30 and drove in 97. Nolan Arenado takes one just outside, 1 1. He walked last time. Fly ball to center back in the first. Did you see when he charged the mound? He went straight ninja. On the glove being tossed at him. I mean, he just went like, <laughs> yeah. It was like, yeah, like slow motion. It just went over his head. Yeah. Perdomo threw the glove and then retreated. Not a good look. One two pitch down to third and it short hops the glove of Rendon making the turn Ionetta heading for third Nolan Arenado will be in the second base. They're kind of out in front on the off speed and watch the hook on it kind of an in between hop to the backhand for Rendon would have been an amazing play if he made it. A lot of spin in English on that baseball and slowed it down just enough so that the Rockies catcher could go first to third. Can't afford too many more here. Yeah, not the way Chad Bettis is pitching. Trevor Story with the infield in. Gio has struck him out twice, swinging. Look where the infield's playing. Trey Turner's behind the baseline because Ionetta's at third with nobody out. I don't think they're going contact here. Speed of the runner dictates where you play. Howie's real shallow. You could actually probably back up a step. Not a 1 0. 
And Geo's found some holes in Trevor Story's swing. Again, he led the National League in strikeouts last year. Struck out 191 times. 18 so far this year. Ionetta walked, went to third on the Arenado double. Well, if he can swing at that one, maybe you try one higher here. We'll see. Got to go for the punch out. 98 pitches for Gio. He's going to have to give it everything he's got here to get out of this one. But it's doable if you get down to Gonzalez. Talked about his numbers against lefties last year, just 206 against left handed pitchers with two home runs. He's in the hole behind Ian Desmond. 2 2 here with nobody out and a mound visit first of the night. So. In the in the brawl in, in Colorado yesterday and the one in Boston, do you get charged like 20 mound visits? <laughs> 100 mound visits? Well, there's only 50 guys. They said guys from the disabled list were visiting well, the mound during that brawl. I, mean, I don't think either one of, well, all four of those teams should have a mound visit for like a month. Yeah, they, they used them up for at least a week. They used a bunch of them. Hadn't thought of that. In there, change up, even though it was up. Story couldn't pull the trigger, and he is three of Gio's seven strikeouts. Mercedes Benz on the pitch cast. Yeah, 82 locked him up, and he might have been thinking about another fastball up. And now with Ian Desmond, you know he's swinging. I don't know that you even have to throw a strike here if you're Gio. He knows that too. He's real aggressive, ultra aggressive in RBI situations, if you remember. Yeah, keep throwing him up there. So Desmond at 222. Sit three homers, nine batted in. Above the Rockies. Logo on his jersey because above the Rockies, above the. That would be a ball. That'd be real high. But above the Colorado, I should say. If it were a video game. And the 0 2 breaking ball, left side, runner coming home, the throw hangs up. Ionetta, he'll trade places at third with Arenado, and Desmond ends up at second. On the fielder's choice, two down. And nicely done. Just as good as a punch out. And I love what Matt Wieters does at the end here. He runs him all the way back. Uh, with gear on, that's not easy. But watch the pump fake here. You never know. It's all Arenado has to do is take a step off the bag, and you got a double play. I don't think big leaguers do this enough. The arm fake. Fish ain't biting on that one, but hey, he's looking for another out right there to help his pitcher out, who's at 102 pitches. I like the arm fake. Nicely done. Runners at second and third, two outs. And Carlos Gonzalez up there pumping. High heater curveball work here beautifully. Changes eye level go up and then go curveball off it. We'll see what they decide on. Well, 
Well, you saw Matt Grace, Geo, is about to throw his 105th pitch of the night. Battling to keep this thing within reach. That's one big inning away, but trying desperately to keep it 3 0. Big curveball. I mean, that's the game plan, right? He showed him the fastball up. He's thinking that's another fastball, drops a curveball on him. You do the same thing here if you want. Fastball up, go back to the curveball. You don't have to go to it right now, but you can. Great block by Matt Weeders, too. Yeah, Matt's having a good night back there in his return. One and two. Breaking ball right side. Ryan Zimmerman will go it himself. And Gio Gonzalez, five of the toughest innings he's had to pitch as a net. Nicely done. Rise up to the fight. One love. One life for the revolution. Tough as nails effort by Geo tonight. So now his teammates would love to get him off the hook and first things first get somebody aboard and get something on the board. Ryan Zimmerman fly ball to right first pitch swinging. That was Chad Bettis 45th pitch of the game. Well Ryan asked me before the game to say happy birthday to his mom Cheryl. And it's not the only birthday today. As a veteran player he should have known not to swing at the first pitch when he asked me to say happy birthday to his mom. It's also his wife's birthday too, Heather. Heather, wow. So That's happy great. 29th birthday to Heather again. And since we're on it, like I said, that's not the only one. It's my dad's 75th birthday today, so happy birthday to everybody. Wow. April 12th, huge. Zimmerman, a huge swing. That ball almost took off on Ian Desmond. Ryan hitting into some rough luck. Well, that bat kind of sums up. Brian's season so far and this at bat kind of sums up Matt's seasons Matt Adams season so far we saw the big one to Cincinnati to right center field and this one tied it up late Washington D.C. Lexus dealers donate two hundred fifty dollars to the Children's National Health System for the first two hundred homers the Nats hit this season Lexus experience amazing Adams up there hacking the only Nats hit hit it hard on a two strike count I think it was two two to the right of Nolan Arenado and it got cleanly into left field. Then a six four three double play ball took care of him and Howie Kendrick. This one to the right side. 
Valeka to Bettis. All right, this one in extra innings too yesterday. A big knock by how we into the gap. I mean, there was a lot of positives yesterday, except for the final outcome. The Nats battled back a few times. I love what Sean Kelly did after giving up the home run to Kurt Suzuki, bearing down and getting some outs with runners on second and third. So there was positives. Veteran presence. He bared down yesterday, a lot like Geo just did. Here's how he hit the ball sharply. I mean, right on the nose, first time, but right at story. For the quick Rockies double play, their 14th of the year. Rockies and the Giants have turned the most double plays. Howie gets a big piece of that one. See you later to the batter's eye. First of the year for Howie. And the Nets are on the board. He'd been thinking for three innings if I would have got that double play ball in the air it was a homer because he hit it right on the screws. So maybe that's. The jolt the Nats need to get back in this one 434 foul 108 miles an hour and he got some elevation on the second swing that he didn't have on his first swing and that one went boy I'm telling you what we might as well be at Coors Field today balls flying here. I mean he hit that hard. But everything is carrying. We haven't seen that yet this year. 73 degrees at game time, and the hitters should love it. There's a ball. <laughs> it's, a, it's a free game of miniature golf. I mean, it's, yeah. There's a grounds crew member I can see out behind the wall about to make an attempt at that one. We have to wait till there's nobody up because you'll be right in the eye of the hitter. Here's Weeders. We got that stat we showed earlier in case you missed it. It's a great stat. We've always thought this ballpark plays small when it's warm. Get to you in a second. Three Oda Weeders with a pinch hitter coming. Moises Sierra. There's a stat we showed you earlier in the game. Check it out 69 degrees and below. Two home runs on average last season. 70 and above, almost three. That's a huge difference. And 90 and above, it's 14 home runs a game. Mm. Show you the tater swing again. One more time. How we, everybody at home, say it with me. How we. Boom. A hanging change up, right? Caught it out front. Go, go. Max saying that in the dugout. Yeah, we're in this one. Here we go. That's what we needed. Howie's 105th career home run. So Weeders aboard with two outs. Moises Sierra came into the game as a pinch hitter and played left field the rest of the way after Brian Goodwin had a stumble out there. Struck out a couple of times, hit a ground ball, so looking for his first Nationals hit. That ball is scorched out to right center over the head of Desmond. Can Matt Wieters make it all the way around? Bob Henley has to hold him. Moises Sierra making a loud noise. I tell you, man, just need something to get you going. And that home run by Howie Kendrick was the Red Bull they were looking for. And this one kind of hangs up there, too. Look at the pop. From Moises Sierra, this ball had another gear. It looked like Desmond had a beat on it, but that thing just kept going. Great read by Matt Weeders, by the way. He knew that was over Ian's head out of the gate, even though there's two outs. My bad on that, but still. Big great. spot for Michael A. Taylor. Great swing. He's got some pop. Yeah, with Sierra at second base, pretty much anything into the outfield will tie the game. Michael A. left side. And Arenado. Throws him out. Well, I thought he took one too many steps. Nats pick up a run on Howie Kendricks straight away. 434 foot home run. And then Washington stranding its first two runners. 3 1 into the sixth.
a homer, six RBIs, and Matt Grace takes over for the lefty. Appearance number eight, two hits, two runs, and eight in the third so far. He's only walked one and struck out eight batters. Well, let's give Gio some love for really bearing down the fifth inning. It looked like that one had a chance to get away. The Nats couldn't give up any more runs. So some runners on second third nobody out he gets a strikeout the fielder's choice right here Matt Wieters does a nice job of running Ionetta back and then the ground out to Ryan Zimmerman to end it so nice job Gio Gonzalez of keeping your ball club in this one and now it's up to Matt Grace in the bullpen to keep this just a two run deficit seven eight nine for the Rockies first up Pat Faleka. One for two with a double career against Grace tonight. A called third strike and a ground ball to Rendon. It's a huge inning for the Nats. You need to get right back in that dugout and get your batting gloves on, put a helmet on, and keep the momentum. Look out. That one past the screen. So, Dan, what about the dugout after the great battle by Gio? The vibe in the dugout definitely changed after that half inning, Bob. High fives, fist pounds all around for Gio. Guys screaming, let's go, let's turn this. Everybody excited after that jam that Gio was able to wiggle out of and then they get the run to get them on the board. The, the vibe changed for sure. Yeah Ryan Zimmerman hit the daylights out of the ball as the first batter after that. Unlucky on it. Nobody will reach that one. And then one out later Howie Kendrick really put a charge in the one. So did Sierra. Rockies box score. DJ LeMahieu. What else is new. D.J. LeMahieu has the second highest career batting average against the Nats to Miguel Cabrera back to his days with the Marlins. So you figure he would be in the middle of it. D.J. came in hitting 373 career against Washington. Spring weather is upon us and we hope you enjoy the four game weekend series with the Rockies. Check out all the ticket information you might need at nationals.com. Warm weather if you like slugging you may see lots of it between now and Sunday. I mean you can feel it right you've watched enough games you've seen this ball club enough over the years seen enough baseball to know when your pitcher bears down like that you get on the board now you got the momentum so it's just so important to get right back in the dugout one two three I feel like you could do some damage you're starting to figure out Chad Bettis even though the Rockies spent over a hundred million dollars on their bullpen in the offseason you feel like you're in the fight all of a sudden you got some adrenaline that is fair Rendon in front of the bag beautifully and perfectly across his body for the first down. What a play. I bet Nolan Arenado likes seeing that one. Maybe. When we talk about the two third baseman in this series, I think it's the subplot. I mean, this ball is just kind of hugging the line. So you have no momentum going to first base. You're going towards home, maybe even a little bit toward the Rockies dugout. He did circle that a hair at the end. But this is a tough play that Anthony Rendon made look easy with a strong throw from down under. Wow. Should make a highlight reel of both third basemen in this series and on Sunday show it to you. That's a base hit to right for Gerardo Parra. He's aboard for Chad Bettis with one out in the sixth. Boy, I almost got myself in big trouble talking about the birthdays. Happy birthday to my mother in law, Phyllis Nebron, watching out in Las Vegas tonight. They don't miss a Nats game out there. So your dad, my mother in law, Ryan Zimmerman's wife and mom wow April 12th. Oh. You did get in trouble that's why you just said it. <laughs> A text message from Mrs. C had nothing to do with nope, that. Nope. You are sleeping on the couch partner. That is a couple of strikeouts one a bunt one swinging.
Took another stab at that one. Chad Bettis has not looked comfortable bunting. Uh -oh. Three one game top six one on one out. Rendon on the grass. Long look at Stu Cole. Are they taking the bun off? This one you might throw over to first just to see. And a foul on the bunt 2 2. Well, Chad Bettis keeps going at least five and allowing two runs or fewer this year. Third consecutive start in which he has done that. But as FP said, the Nats bat started making some loud noises in that bottom of the fifth, and the top of the order is coming. 2 2. And he still hasn't laid one down two outs. Guy can flat out hit huh LeMahieu first inning over. Then the double that was mishandled so two for three for LeMahieu tonight. So he's two for three. Gio got him to ground out. Gio did not have a ground ball out until Valleca ending the third. Then he got Para and LeMahieu in the fourth on the ground. Got Desmond and Gonzalez in the fifth. This ball jacked toward the deep gap left center. And DJ LeMahieu has homered again. 5 1 Colorado. He is on the list of net killers. Yeah, up. And Matt Grace is known for the ground ball, the sinker down the zone. That was belt high. And LeMayhew, who always seems locked in against this ball club, hits another one. So, second home run for LeMayhew tonight. And that one left the mark. He's now batting around 390 career against the Nats with four home runs and 20 RBIs. Started his career with the Cubs. But the Nats don't see the Rockies very often, and this guy has really hurt our pitching staff. Chris Sionetta 0 for 1 with two walks. Two and one. Nationals have hit 16 home runs, but now they've given up 17. Three and one. Up the middle. How he couldn't get there. Probably a hit even if he does. And the Rockies keep on hitting and now it's Nolan Arenado. So important when you're behind in a game to keep the score right where it's at. And so far this year that just hasn't happened yet. It's early. And it'll change. Phone ringing in the bullpen. Trevor God is out there already throwing. Derek Lilliquist to the mound.
Arenado fly ball to center walk and a double off the glove of Anthony Rendon. Since the start of last year Nolan Arenado. Hitting right around 420 against left handed pitching. High in the air left center. Taylor and Adams Michael A keeps going with it and had to catch it back over his shoulder. Man it's carrying tonight. Trey Turner always great against the Rockies straight ahead. Green Knight in Colorado last April the 25th Trey Turner first inning single second inning double flight out in the fourth and then sixth inning the other way for the homer and then in the seventh inning the other way and as soon as this ball got in the corner we were thinking three bases and so was he Trey Turner went four for six that night with a home run Seven batted in. Nats beat the Rockies in a tight one, 15 to 12. One one. Three homers, 13 RBIs, career against Colorado. Strike out in the fly ball to center tonight. And a chopper. Bettis goes to get it. Ball checked up on him. And just in time to get the speedy shortstop. Next up, Anthony Rendon. Yeah, based on that last fly ball from Arenado, you, I mean, wow. you have to hit the ball in the air tonight. Chad Bettis against the top four hitters in the lineup tonight. They are 0 for 9 against him. So you won't see much happening at the top of the box score. Adams, a base hit in the second. Howie, the long homer in the fifth. And then Moises Sierra pinch hitting that. Impressive double last inning. Up in the zone, a strike to Anthony. Chad Bettis' career 26 and 23. It's his 72nd career start, 28 years of age.
Target in. Rendon to center. Breaking back and now coming forward. Desmond. Two outs. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. They have our league leaders. Month of April since the start of the 2016 season. Look at the categories where Bryce is better than anyone in baseball. He was on fire two years ago before the Nats went to Chicago. Another great start to the season last year. And another one so far here. Just think it's reflective of all the hard work he does in the offseason. Yeah. He, he works as hard or harder than anybody in the weight room, in the batting cage, with his hitting coach. And April's just the result, the quick snapshot of all the stuff he does all winter when you're not looking. The behind the scenes stuff. You know, we've seen all the, the, the pictures of him, you know, with the deadlifts and the stuff he does, but he works so hard in the offseason. That's that's why he gets out of the gate so quick. And then, you know, the rigors of a 162 game schedule get to you after a while. No matter how hard you work out during the season, you can't work as hard as you can in the offseason. It's just impossible. So what do you try to do during the season? You try to maintain. You know, you go in the weight room every once in a while just to keep what you built up so you don't lose it quickly. You're going to lose it, but you want to lose it as gradually as you can throughout the course of the season and stay as strong as you can without running yourself into the ground. So it's a fine line. 2 1. Yeah, I've always wondered, FP, how do you make the decision on how hard to work during the offseason? Do you have to give yourself some downtime yeah. before you refire and get started again? Yeah, well, I mean, it's different for everyone, but usually you take a month to kind of detox from the season mentally and relax and let your body heal from all the, the dings. And then you, you go crazy, you know, right around November. Ooh, quick pitched him. Did you see that? And down low to strike him out. Chad Bettis, six impressive innings. Fourth strikeout, Harper twice. It's all Rockies tonight so far. Anthony Rendon third. Check this out. Flat footed, weight on his back foot, transfer in the sidearm sling all the way across. Good stretch by Ryan Zimmerman on the backside, but the arm strength it takes to make that play is just unbelievable. And then the slow roller here in Expo, making it look so easy. You see the transfer, another sidearm sling with his weight going toward home plate, so throwing against his body right on the nose. Newsflash, that guy's pretty good. From TVs to tablets, everything is amazing on the 100% fiber optic network. Visit getfios.com today. Trevor got fourth appearance. Three hits, four runs, three earned in, two and a third with three walks and a strikeout. That ball laid down. Trevor Story and got plays it well. 
Nice play, one out. Trevor Story's reached base in 10 consecutive games, not tonight yet. And a good play. Did you see him lick his lips, lick his hand before he went over and get that ball real quick? This guy reminds me of Jeff Brantley, Trevor got a little bit, right? Yeah, there's some similarity. Yo, Cowboy. <laughs> now a broadcaster with Marty Brenneman in Cincinnati. Still, every time I see Brantley, I said, how can you be a cowboy? You're from Mississippi. Come on. Yeah. Danny Espinosa's from Long Beach or Huntington Beach or something. Yeah. I thought he was yeah. a cowboy, too. So. Some mamas let their sons <laughs> grow up to be cowboys. <laughs> O2, despite what the song warns you of. Ian, one for three tonight. And the breaking ball away gets him. Trevor Gott comes out firing here in the seventh. Jackie Robinson, Black Heritage Day back Sunday, 71st anniversary of Jackie's historic debut in 47. So join the Nats in commemorating the great Robinson and Black Heritage Day when the Nats and the Rockies wrap up this series. Go to MLBcommunity.org to learn more and for tickets, nationals.com. And if you haven't seen the movie 42, you got to find it, you got to rent it. I think it's a wonderful story of Jackie Robinson's career and also a great period piece where they authenticated a lot of the old ballparks and really did a great job on the baseball aspect of that movie. That yeah, was wonderful. They nailed it for sure. Harrison Ford as Branch Rickey. He nailed it. God's got some movement on that fastball tonight. Two balls one strike into the nine o'clock hour we go. Bob FP. Dan up here in the booth hanging with us for a little while. How are we hitting taters? Again. Hitting the ball well. Trevor got it. One, two, three. Time to stretch. Ryan Zimmerman, Matt Adams, and Howie. Some power ahead. by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game 
may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Yeah, we got to start some sort of movement where people start going to the front of the ballpark to that entrance because it is the most underrated part of Nats Park that I don't think a lot of people see. Beautiful lighting. DJ LeMayhew continues his punishment of the Nats over the years. How he got the Nats on the board, Gio really had to battle through five tonight. It's a good hitting Colorado team, even without Charlie Blackman. So all Nats starters will have their work cut out for them this weekend. But it's so important against the Rockies, and we've seen them in the past. They develop that uppercut swing because of Coors Field. So you come into Nats Park, you got to keep the ball down because they're not going to change your swing. And the first warm night at Nats Park, the ball's really flying. So it's been conducive to the Rockies, but hey, the Nats have their opportunities too. Ryan Zimmer can try to get it going right now. Hit the ball in the air, get it up, and watch it fly tonight at the ballpark because it's going. Yeah, and in a ball game where things are moving quickly, thanks to Chad Bettis, Nats need to make something happen pretty quickly right here. Four, five, six in the seventh. Just settling in from the stretch. 71 pitches 44 strikes for the effective Chad Bettis. Pretty good nine pitch seventh inning for Trevor got to get the guys back to the bat rack. You know, I talked to Kevin Long the other day behind the cage about all this launch angle stuff and getting the ball in the air and not hitting on the ground. And he told me the exact opposite of what I was always thinking about it. He said you do it with your lower half. You drive your back knee toward the ground and it creates a swing that elevates a baseball. So I'm thinking you go up there and swing like it's a softball game right look for the bottom half of the ball and try to launch get underneath it. But really you just keep the same upper half swing carp and you yeah. take your back knee you drive it toward the ground or toward your front calf. And it creates loft and elevation in the swing naturally by what you do with your lower half. Well, last weekend you and our crew had some impressive video of Joanna Cespedes doing that very thing. And tonight's the perfect night for it. Ball ain't been flying this yard yet, and tonight it is. So it's just interesting to kind of relearn the way they're teaching hitting nowadays. You know, I taught my son, I taught my hitters in the minor leagues the wrong way to hit. I did. It was all about getting on top of the ball and creating backspin, getting your hands in the strike zone quick. Whoa, way inside. A to B, you want to get your hands right in the zone, pinch the ball, so to speak, you know, like a knockdown two iron, create backspin, the ball carries. And now the way they're teaching it is, is we were teaching everybody wrong. Different time, though. You guys were doing what everybody else was doing yeah. at that time. You've been involved in baseball a long time. I've been watching it a long time. I can't think of any stretch of time over the last 30 years where I've seen the game change more dramatically than it has in the last five to eight years. Yeah, I remember times as an expo where Jerry Manuel was our third base coach and Felipe Alou would whistle to him and they would have a sign, get on top of the ball. Yeah. They tell you, get on top. You're getting underneath it. Now it's the opposite. Whitey Herzog used to have a bet with Ozzie Smith. Every time Ozzie hit a ball in the air, he had to pay Whitey. Oh, yeah. And every time he got it on the ground, the manager paid him back or whatever. And that's that was the thinking back then. Now Ozzie was a little guy. But we got little guys hitting home runs now. Yeah, opposite field home runs. Yeah. Willie Mays Hayes had to do push ups when he hit the ball. <laughs> Three and two. Target away. Ryan Zimmerman hanging in there continues to get a piece of the baseball. Good at bat work in here. Want to finish it off. Rockies bullpen. Guys, a couple guys standing around, but nobody throwing. They haven't had to do a thing tonight. The way Bettis is going for Bud Black. And the battle continues. Couldn't hit the ball any harder than Ryan did last time up. Screamer to center. Be fun to watch him get hot, isn't it? Well, maybe the weather and Zimmerman will do it simultaneously here. He'd love a 10 pitch tater for his mom on her birthday, right? Now. See the quick pitch? He'll take the walk. 
And yeah, did it to Harper last inning, didn't he? Yeah, just kind of abbreviated windup, almost like a slide step out of the windup. You get right in the middle, and then he jumps at you and tries to sneak one in there. Watching Johnny Cueto. It's a great at bat. As good as a hit for the Nats right now. There's a mound visit by the Rockies. Matt Adams one for two. One one. There's that man. Has one hit against the shift tonight. Well placed fastball away by Bettis. Got him. Matt Adams couldn't pull the trigger. Bettis powering one to the inside edge. I think if you look at pitch cast, everything was away in the sequence. It's kind of locked him up on the other side of the plate. He didn't mean for it to go there. You saw where Ionetta was setting up. He was setting up away, had to reach back across the plate. And Matt Adams disagreed. There's Howie Kendrick. He's hit it extremely hard twice once into a double play and once into the batter's eye. Seen it really well, two and oh. Rockies have some arms out there. Brian Shaw. They have Wade Davis as their closer. He's five out of six. And their guys told me that Adam Adovino is throwing the ball as well as anybody in baseball right now. One of their hard throwing setup guys. 2 0. -oh. Well, he's hitting some edges. It looked like Shaw was pouring water in his hat, didn't it? And then he shook it out and put it on his head. That's paint right there. If it is a strike. Down, down, down. Makeup call. 100% makeup call. Joined now by lefty Jake McGee. Yeah, look at pitch number three, a strike, pitch four, a ball. That was a makeup call. It's time for your fourth drive of the game. Let's go back to the fifth inning. And how he got something down in. Looked like a changeup kind of floated right into the turbo zone. So with two outs and nobody on. He goes deep for the first time this year. Hurry to your local Ford dealers for great savings on cars, trucks, and SUVs.
Big pitch here three and two with one out runner holding how he stays alive. Something about Chad Bettis in the NL East. Last 14 starts against the division the Rockies are 12 and 2 in those games. She had to throw 21 pitches this inning already a lot of that thanks to Ryan Zimmerman the foul balls then the walk. Three two to Howie and now he's going to waste several. That's the only team in the National League East playing tonight. Right side, how he's got to hurry. Four, six, three. Second double play of the night by the Rockies. This one to the eighth, 5 1, Colorado. Nine pitches, six strikes, and a one, two, three, seven. No better time to act than today. PNC with our minor league insights make today the day. So the top prospects in the organization, according to MLB.com, going to have to still wait for the swelling to go down for Victor Robles' injury to be fully figured out. There they are. And got going right after guys tonight. He's at that sidearm whip going. Good movement on the fastball. Pat Valeka, 0 for 3. I'm telling you, Skipper loves it when you come into a ball game and you're pumping strikes. Then he mixes in the breaking ball, gets the pop up for Ryan Zimmerman. Four straight. Peanuts back next weekend. Thursday cheers with drink specials. Friday night, famous Friday. Carolina League Legends card set giveaway Saturday. Sunday, Harry Potter Day. And the first reading program day of the season. How much can one team have going on? Check it out next weekend. It's unbelievable. Harry Potter Day, huh? Ryan McMahon is on deck. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So Pettis, uh, Bettis, pardon me, appears to be done after 94 pitches. Gerardo was involved in that brawl yesterday. He got a few licks in. You would think that Nolan and Gerardo would be hearing from the league here soon if they haven't already. Ball hit hard. Trey Turner picks it to Zimmerman. Two outs. Nice play. Ball hit hard by Parra. It's hard to tell from up here if he caught it. And then just the flip throw after he gets the short hop. Stays soft, kind of traps it in the glove and then flings it. Just totally flings it to first. I like it. Ryan McMahon is a 23 year old infielder from Yorba Linda, California. Drafted by the Rockies out of high school, second round five years ago. Three for 19 in a cup of coffee with the big club last year. Trevor got's work rate. I like that he's pounding the strike zone, going right after guys. This is nice. Yeah, this uh, is reminiscent of his last spring training appearance against St. Louis when he had those guys very impressed with what they saw. Another one to Trey Turner. Trevor Gott's going to retire six in a row to get the Nats to the bottom of the eighth. Weeders pitcher spot and then Taylor. To you by Night Point Systems. They offer the technology you need when you need it. And by Lexus Experience, amazing. Beautiful night. Mass and trawler going by here on the Anacostia. Just laying in the weeds, all camouflage was that camera. That wasn't weird. MLB at bat is your number one Nationals app. Customize your experience to catch every moment this season. Get Nationals. Home screen icons and features such as MLB.tv Game of the Day, pitch tracking and game highlights, live radio broadcast stats and news. Download MLB at bat today. Brian Shaw. Rockies wanting to sport a veteran. Powerful bullpen this year. Last year with Cleveland. 79 appearances in a 352 ERA, 77 innings. He struck out 73 hitters. Yeah, 91% cutters. Averaging 94 miles an hour. 
Those of you that don't know it's a pitch that's going to move in on Matt Wieters. Pitcher spot next Wilmer Defoe. Taking all the way, trying to get on base. And Sean Kelly for the ninth. Outstanding job by Trevor Gott. And this one into the shift, slow to the outfield for LeMahieu. And that's to McMahon, who took over at first base on the double switch. Cutter's so hard to hit left handed. I mean, it looks like a fastball. It's you can see the overspin to it. But a, a late sharp cutter, it'll break some bats. You just saw that right there. You think of Kenley Jansen, Mariano Rivera with that same pitch. It's almost easier for a right hander to hit it because it's breaking away from you. Yeah. And there was times when I thought about hitting right handed against that pitch just because, you know, right handers have more success. It is getting late and that's down to their final five outs. Defoe one for two as a pinch hitter as he faces Brian Shaw for the first time. Nats need Wilmer aboard, Taylor and Turner the next two. It's a good take for the ball club trying to get on. Wilmer Defoe is going to be called out and he knew it. Sixth national to strike out tonight. You get breaking nationals news as it happens by checking out MassinSports.com. Visit our site for the latest headlines from Mark Zuckerman to Brian Kerr. Don't miss any Nat stories. Check out at MassinSports.com. She's checking it out right now. Byron Kerr, excuse me. Michael A is 0 for 2 and he faces Shaw for the first time. Michael A. Taylor is 7 for 45. I'll tell you, this is one reliever who comes out of the bullpen and he is not standing around between pitches. He gets it back from Ionetta. Or in this case, the umpire, and he's ready to roll. Two and one. So last year, right handed hitters hit 256 against Shaw, lefties 231. You see how he's got a chance there because it's going away from me. Yeah. If you're a right hander, you're thinking right center. Guy throws a cutter 90% of the time. You're going to get something moving, hopefully, onto your barrel that you can hit the other way. And then left handed, it's just rough. I mean, it's hard to pull your hands in and get the barrel to the baseball when the ball's chasing your swing. Taylor gashes one into right field. 
That's always a good sign. I mean, the right mindset, the right game plan got to a 3 2 count. Beautiful swing, and Michael A. with his first knock of the day turns it 0 for 2. First knock of the night at a 1 for 3. So, foot down early, no stride. Taking the cutter the direction it was going. Nice swing. Trey Turner facing Shaw for the first time. That base it opened up a huge hole on the right side and Tim Bogar was ducking on that one. It's the right idea by Trey. Love to get it to Bryce with two outs wouldn't you. Oh yeah. A lot of traffic out there. Bases tipsy. Good take on that slider diving. Five one Rockies they've out hit the Nats eight four. And to the right side, LeMahieu able to get over there. The Nats have stranded only three runners tonight. A couple of double plays, helping that for the Rockies who lead by four. Lefty, two starts, 0 and 2, high ERA. He's going to have a tough time against some Nats right-handers tomorrow. And the righty, Tanner Roark, is 1 and 0 with a four and a half career against the National League West. This is interesting. 12 and 5 with a 2.92 career ERA, and he's 1 and 1 in three games, two starts against the Rockies. Tanner tomorrow. Need expert printing? The UPS store has you covered. Together. There's nothing we can't solve. Now Sean Kelly for the ninth. LeMahieu Ionetta Arenado at the top of the Colorado order. You see the numbers for Sean Kelly. Did a great job here yesterday wiggling out of a jam. Opponents hitting 200 against Sean early in the season. Yeah, so a back to back situation for Sean. Is that when you know a reliever's back, when he can go back to back days and be effective? I know it varies here and there, but 
It's usually a pretty good test. Well, we'll see. He's had trouble in the past just because of, you know, he's a double Tommy John guy. So, you know, recovery and bouncing back has been something we've kept our eye on with Sean. And we'll see how he does here tonight. Close. Three and one. LeMayhew. 0 for 2 career against Kelly with a walk. Right on the inside edge. And LeMahieu stings another one. Taylor back, has to play the carom, plays it very well, and there's a play at second. Close. But another extra base hit for DJ LeMahieu, who is four for five tonight with 12 total bases. I mean, he just flat out rakes. And there's no other way to put it. And when you go four for four with two homers and two doubles, in the star of the show. It's just that simple. Michael A plays this as well as you can. Glove save. Looked like the former shortstop that he was on that play, didn't he? And Trey Turner keeps the tag on just in case LeMayhew pops off the bag, but he made that close. Nice throw. Strong throw right on the money. Played as well as you can play it. Chris Ionetta. Two walks, a base hit, one for two tonight. He'll lift one to left. Matt Adams runners tagging he's going to challenge Matt Adams arm and that's a good decision Mayhew to third base with one out with more on Sean Kelly here's Dan Bob you guys talking about Sean Kelly pitching back to back days that's something that he did in Atlanta on the Nationals road trip last week he admitted to me that he wasn't sure how that second appearance was going to go for him in spring training he had at least two days off in between all of his appearances so he took the mound that second day in Atlanta after pitching the day prior he told me he didn't know how it would go he was just going to go out there throw as hard as he could and hope for the best said he actually felt great though. Nats are going to appeal to second on the tag up here. Runners safe. Sean Kelly two strikeouts in a one two three inning in Atlanta on Monday and then the sixth inning on Tuesday a strikeout a one two three inning 13 pitches nine strikes so. He passed that particular test a week ago. Infield in with one out. Arenado the hitter. Two for three career against Sean. He fights back here or sets up the double play? That's a good question. Also, a strikeout guy on deck in story. And the foul tip even things up 2 2. You feel something on that swing? 
Looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Tell himself to get right to the baseball with that little movement he's making with his top hand. Helmet comes off. Sometimes he gets tougher with two strikes. Meaning he takes a little out of his swing and he thinks right center. We've seen it over the years. And right here, just kind of a, a little abbreviated swing, even though his helmet came off. But he's always thinking right center. He is an extra base hit machine. 2 2. Pops this one up. Matt Weeder's back. And then the backspin takes him further from the screen for an important second out. That's a big out. Nicely done. Tough out, too. All right, fastball couldn't lay off it. Sean Kelly trying to wiggle out of another one here. Back to back days. Big out left. Trevor Story 0 for 1. Again, Sean Kelly. Now the infield can back up. Is it last year that story got off to that crazy start? Two years ago. Two years ago, 16, right? Yeah. Hit 27 home runs, drove in 72 runs. Toward the UCL in his left thumb, August 2nd. So he would have been a 30 home run guy easily in his rookie year. Maybe 100 RBIs. Two and one now. Yeah, he's just 25 years of age, first rounder. Seven years ago, 45th overall player taken. Kelly with a nice slider dropping it in there to even things up. There are two ways if you're showing right now. You could elevate the fastball or try to expand with the slider, meaning started it as a strike and break it off the plate down and away. Two options here. Fastball up and in. Back to back appearances. Kelly passing another test. Rendon, Harper, Zimmerman, and then they need some more to bat in the bottom of the ninth.
Nets need a big four spot at least to keep this thing going. Free agent acquisition by the Rockies December 15th they signed left hander 31 year old Jake McGee re signed him actually 62 games for the Rockies last year 57 the year before that most of his career with the Tampa Bay Rays and this will be a seventh time out already. The yeah, fastball 83 percent of the time at 93 miles an hour curveball slider to go with it. Load him up and see what happens. Here we go. Yeah, so uh, Colorado, non-safe situation. Wade Davis still out in the bullpen. Anthony Rendon, 0 for one career with a walk against Jake McGee. You know, I'm thinking about Chad Bettis's night and how he kind of mixed it up nicely kept the ball down for the most part on a, on a hitters night here at the ballpark. But if you're a Rockies pitcher I mean you can't wait to wear your your gray uni right. <laughs> it feels fair right when you get out there. I mean even though it was carried tonight Chad Bettis is probably thinking well this is nothing. He had seven ground ball outs in seven innings. Doubling up on a couple of ground balls in the second and the seventh. Anthony Rendon now fighting to stay alive with his 0 2 count. Yeah big question for the Rockies has always been the pitching staff. Rice looking for a good handle on things here in the ninth. And the Rockies 11th and 12th in team ERA coming into this game. The Nats at 402, the Rockies at 470. But they have pitched brilliantly tonight. Rendon on a breaking ball. It got in on his hands. Ian Desmond. Nats will be calling on Tanner Roark tomorrow night. They'll need to do some good things in the last three games of this homestand if they don't pull this one out tonight. The Nats would fall to two and five here. And of course the Scherzer Strasburg combo going Saturday Sunday which means they will not pitch against the Mets in New York. This feels like they're missing that spanky spark doesn't it. Yeah. Adam Eaton is a difference maker. In many ways. Bryce Harper 0 for 2 against McGee. Braves cooled off. Bryce some he had a hit in his last at bat yesterday two for ten with three walks in the Atlanta series and the Rockies have gotten him three times tonight. That's a great fastball to the outside edge. Target away. Harper late for 94. And I think Bryce is taking exception to the strike two call as he walks away. Yeah, he said it's still a ball as he was walking back to the dugout. I think he's talking about pitch number three, right? Yeah.
Nats final hope to keep it going. Ryan Zimmerman 0 for 2 with a walk. And he faces McGee for the first time. That ball's hit a ton out to center, but not enough. And at 9.49, this one is over. The Rockies, Chad Bettis, Brian Shaw, and Jake McGee shut down the Nats on a four hitter and a 5 1 win. And Bryce Harper still giving it to Ben May, the home plate umpire. It's a frustrated ball club right now with not a